Hey team, welcome back to my channel. In this video, we're going to look at the insert store procedure in PostgreSQL. I have two examples. The SQL statements for this video are available on my GitHub account. To write a store procedure that doesn't insert, we have to have a table. Notice we're going to create one. So we're going to say create table. If not exist, the name of our table is called employee. Notice that we have six fields. Notice that we're about to write an insert store procedure. And in this table, there are two columns that already have default values. So in insert, we don't need these two columns. And then an update date, well, we don't need that on an insert either. So we're only going to be looking at three fields. Let's go ahead and create this table. Now there's the basic structure for a store procedure. Notice it begins with create or replace procedure. And then notice I say table name here. Well, what table am I going to write an insert store procedure for? Well, employee. So bring employee down and then give it a verb. And we're going to say insert. So we're going to create a procedure called employee insert. Now we just talked about we only have three parameters as our input. So what we're going to do is we're going to prefix all of the fields that we want is with a P. So plea employee name, I mean employee ID, and that is an integer. And then we have P first name, and that is a varchar 30. And our last one, P last name, is also a varchar 30. And those are our input parameters. Now, once we get done with our input parameters, what I normally do is on an insert command, I look at this data types and I say, ooh, this is the primary key. So we have to make sure this has a value. And up here it says not null. So both of these fields are required as well. So what we do is we drop in some validation. Notice P amp ID is null. Then, well, if it's null, I'm going to raise an exception because I'm expecting a value. I'm expecting a value on first name and last name as well. So these parameter validations are very, very important. Now, we can actually do testing right now to make sure that we do have our validation done correctly. Let's uh, go ahead and compile this and do a test. So I'm going to build that. Okay, everything is good so far. So what I'm going to do is say um, call employee insert and we have three. So I'm going to say null, null, null. And that's going to go and do our first test. Notice it says employee ID must have a value. So I can come over here and say one. Let's see what happens next. Then it's saying first name. Well, first name will say uh, software. Let's go and run that. And now we have last name. So notice that we went step by step and we checked each one of these if to make sure it worked correctly. So we'll say nuggets here. And now when I do this, we shouldn't get any errors. Well, now that we're good, now we can come down there and write our insert statement. Now our insert statement is as basic as it gets. So we'll say insert into, what is our table name? Employee. So employee. Then what are our three fields? Amp ID, first name and last name. Now for every insert, we have to say values. So values and what value is holding amp ID? Well, that's that P amp ID. So we say P amp ID and then we have the P first name and P last name. And make sure we put a semicolon at the end here. Now what this will do is it will come down there, validate it, do an insert, and then we are done. So let's go ahead and build this and then let's run the test. I'm going to try to insert one software nuggets into this table. Let's execute. Notice it was successful. Let's do a select star and see that. Select star from employee. And notice we got software nuggets we got the two default values and update date is null. Just what we expect. Let us look at our second store procedure. Let's first look at the database. Notice employee v2. I changed employee ID to a serial value. That means it will auto generate its value. So then when we're creating a store procedure, employee 2 insert, notice no employee ID. I'm just going to use first name, last name, and then I'm going to use an output parameter and I'm going to call that RV, return value, amp ID as an integer. Now I did my parameter validation. Notice I've only got two input parameters, first name and last name. And then we say insert into employee V2, first name, last name, values the parameters, first name and last name. And then we say returning MPID into RV MPID. 
we defined emp ID, RV emp ID here. So let us go ahead and build our short procedure. That was successful. And then we have a little script. Notice if we say do dollar declare v amp id as an integer. Now for every begin we have an end and this ends the open dollar. So we're going to say call employee v2 insert. That is the name of our store procedure. And notice that we're going to be sending SQL programmer and then the output parameter v amp id. And then we can perform our test on this small script. So notice it was successful and it came back amp id equals one. Well, if I keep banging on that, notice the values keep changing. You know, that uh, return value from the stroke procedure. I can say select star from employee v2 and we should have seven rows in there. And let's take a little look at that. And notice that we have our seven rows. That was example two. And there you have it, team, the insert store procedure in PostgreSQL. The first example, most simple. The second one used it as an output variable, which is very valuable. Now, if you have any questions about this video, please leave them below. Until next time, take care.